I have 624 individual cards, 74% of all Super Nintendo USA releases. There's also some obscure peripherals. 11, 12, 13, 14. One of the things I always like to get was ridiculous and crazy controllers. Yeah, this looks like Harvest Moon. Six Space Invaders games. Super Noah's Ark 3D. These are super collectible nowadays. I think it's like a game G. Jun SNES, Jun SNES. Jun SNES. Do you ever go to arcades? I went sometimes. The ultimate gaming experience was to play at the arcade. Home consoles were just kind of a, a facsimile. That was the way they premiered. Yeah. It was the theatrical release, if yes. you will. For people who absolutely had to have that feel was arcade style controllers. I think if you were a real arcade rat, I think if right. you really wanted to spend a lot of time at the arcade, you got very familiar with how these controls worked and maybe you wanted to have them at home. I mean, I spent maybe 99% of my video gaming at home and then I would go to the arcade and I'd be like, I don't need 360 degrees of motion. Yeah, the D-pad is fine. <laughs> we have a selection of controllers that is meant to emulate your arcade experience. But I didn't know any friends who had things like this. No, neither did I. I mean, I knew about like the Super Advantage, right? This yeah. is Nintendo's first party one. It's made by ASCIIWare and it is a really nice quality controller. It's got turbo functions for all your buttons. You even got the styling of the Super Nintendo to match the purple buttons, which is super cool. Do you remember what the retail would have been for this when we were kids? I believe it was $49.95, which is about the price of an inexpensive game at the time. Right, certain kids wanted to show off off their peripherals. Yeah. They wanted to be like, look how prepared to play games I yeah. have. Nintendo would make first party bags. You can put your Game Boy in here yes. and all the games. Uh -huh. My friend Gary had a tray in which you put your Super Nintendo in. You lined up all your games on the side. You could wind the controller cords into two different areas and then put the controllers in. And it had a plastic cover that went on top. So video gaming for the business boy. Yes. <laughs> for the boy who took a briefcase to school <laughs> yeah, like myself. Like, Man, he's got his <laughs> together. <laughs> Other than the professional looking ones and the official one, there were a couple ones in between, such as this Fighter Stick SN by Askewear, made by the same company as the Super Advantage, similar but not quite as deluxe. The arcade layout is where you have the L and R buttons as two separate buttons on the side. I think trigger that. buttons have such better design. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're on a flat arcade cabinet, you can't really have you know the trigger button. But again, I ask, why is this considered like Class A? Video gaming. It is a gimmick. Yeah, I think that they want you to feel like you're at like a like a flight deck. Yeah. When in actual fact you're playing Mortal Freaking I mean, Kombat. That said, <laughs> as a child, if I got one of these, I would convince myself I loved it because yes. it's my accessory. <laughs> but yeah, being an adult, I know it's trash. If my parents bought me an arcade style thing when I was, I, it would have blown my mind. Yeah, yeah. it would have been awesome. Yeah. The gimmick would have worked. Yep. This is the quick shot. This one's interesting because it takes batteries. It has the four buttons in the normal orientation, has your LR here, and then has your start and select up there. And then you have some functions down here for slow motion, which basically just pauses and unpauses the game really fast. And each button has an LED to tell you when you're pressing it, which is probably very cool for the 90s. This must have been exposed to some sun. So it won't play at all without the batteries? My guess is that the inputs would work, but the LEDs wouldn't light well, up. Well, we're gonna have to try it. The suction pads are pretty cool that you'd stick it on your tail and then it wouldn't move around so much, which is really kind of one of the central theories of all of these. <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, less portability. <laughs> 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 More Harder to use. Yeah. And then we have the big boys. These are the mega buck ones. Branded Street Fighter. Almost Street Fighter. It's like knockoff. S, is it an F? Or is it a not an F? Who yeah. can tell? I remember when we were trying to find like all of the items from the collection. Yes. You were like, there's two very important items. We've got to find them. <laughs> Feel one of these things, Frankie. Hold it in your hand. Finally crafted, made of wood. If you're playing a fighter game like Mortal Kombat, I can kind of see the value with yeah. the joystick, because to do this move, you need down, right. diagonal, right. forward. If you're in a really intense game of Mortal Kombat, you're going to get real aggressive with the joystick. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like a controller, you can only get so abusive on. These would last forever, but in reality, Super Nintendo controls in general were super durable. All that stuff was really made with kids in mind. And you yeah. know, you've know, you seen people get super mad at a Super Nintendo controller. How many times have you ever seen one actually broken? And this is actually my favorite one. First of all, it's a little more portable, very responsive. And I like that the buttons are labeled. That is nice. I step up to an arcade cabinet and I feel like I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite arcade game? Probably Simpsons. Yep. Yeah. Simpsons. Yeah. 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 Uh, and probably TMNT right after that, which are, they're basically the same game. Yeah. yeah. Just different skin, but that's all you need. Well, yeah. Frankie, I think we have to try these out. Turtles in Time? Let's Turtles do Turtles in time. in time. Frankie, you're going to try out the ASCIIWare SN Fighter Pro first. Keith, you're going to try out the ASCIIWare Super Advantage. Cowabunga! Cowabunga! I'm Mike. How did that happen? 
go. Somebody, it's probably a turbo on <laughs> something like that. Or they all turn to turbo. Okay. No, I'll make a lantern, that's what I wanted. All right, B and cool, yeah. So Frankie's Leo and Keith is Mike Mikey. Ball. Mikey. How does it feel, guys? Do you feel like you're really in the arcade? I actually do. It's responsive and it doesn't feel weird. Even the 360 controls don't feel weird. I'm only using two buttons. Yeah, this is really a two button game. And this was based on the original arcade game, which was then ported to the NES as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Yep. The arcade game is what they called it. I feel like on a regular basis, Keith says, Manhattan, 3 a.m. Big Apple. And that's the one, Big Apple. <laughs> on a regular basis, I... Do you? I add 3 a.m. to pretty much everything <laughs> I do. Big Apple, 3 a.m. <laughs> I do it at work and no one knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just took the pizza, oops. Ass wow. I know. So who gets the pizza has always been a real big problem in these games. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And then sometimes no one gets the pizza and it disappears. It's just dumb. And it's just, that's it's just, that's just incompetence on both your parts. <laughs> yeah, so like diagonal down matters. You do kind of a slow attack if you don't also press a direction. Yeah. When you do jump, jump kicks. The super advantage is pretty simple to use. I don't really like the buttons. I would prefer to use a regular controller, but I'm kind of digging the joystick. Do you want to trade for real quick? Yeah, Just sure. To see Let's what do that. Do they feel pretty much the same? I, I'm getting used to it. I like the other one more right now. There's more weight to this, so yeah. it's not moving it around move as around. much. Yeah, when and you I'm... really do kind of need a good grip yeah. on the table. I think I prefer the other one. In this particular case, the jump and the attack are diagonal from one yeah. another, B and Y, whereas these were uh, lateral. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, this one's laid out like the arcade style. That one's laid out like a Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's the way to go necessarily. You attack April. Like, April. Yeah, you want. April's the final boss. <laughs> Let's try a different game, different controllers. I'd like to try Power Rangers. Let's do, do that. So first of all, as far as like graphics for Power Rangers games go, yep. this is pretty sweet so far. Yeah. This is pretty good. You have the quick shot, which it turns out I does work without the batteries, right? including lighting up, which is pretty fancy. There were other functions on it, like memory bank, slow motion. Keith's theory is that maybe uh, there's like a save function yeah, and that requires battery. Yeah, you can in buttons. Fighting mode? Yeah, because we're just gonna fight each other. Yeah. I don't understand what all these 360 degrees of buttons is. Well, you've got the L and R. That's the two gray ones. I'm gonna be Goldar. And I'm going to be <laughs> this giant lipstick. No, I that will destroy the, the lipstick so monster. <laughs> and when I destroy Rita, the, the Power Rangers will have no. So I have to tell you, this does feel more appropriate than a regular console controller. Yeah. You know how like you double tap to run? Yep. That feels more natural for sure. Okay, look at button masher over there. I'll say. <laughs> Can you defeat a button masher? Well, wait, should I just do that? I feel like I'm hacking at work. <laughs> totally won. What? Scale. Do you find that this is much easier to match than a normal controller? This is, because look at my, <laughs> I can use the palm of my hand. I'm using some sort of like random number generator fuzzy logic algorithm or something like that. And I'm pretty much unstoppable. Oh, Goldar's dead. <laughs> Frankie Floyd, the most basic possible strategy. The power in the palm of my hand, but not really, because it's this huge. Do you want to trade real quick? Yes. <laughs> Let me go with Lord Zed. Who I think is read. one of the cooler designed villains. He's a good villain. He's got a brain exposed. Lord and stuff. Zed. And I'll be the white tiger. Press white start, the ranger, tiger, tiger power. Zordon's gonna like watch us. Rangers. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Frank, he's employing the king strategy. <laughs> A time-honored strategy. And David Fitzgerald as Zordon. <laughs> David Fitzgerald, whatever the hell the guy's name is. What are we doing? Very cool. I don't appreciate oh! that you keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I literally, I, I used all Use buttons. Use the palm like it's of your hand. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, just go, 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 go. Look at oh this. My God. You make the noise with your mouth, too. Go, 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 Ooh, I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm going to beat Zed and make out with Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to die here. Mega yes. Time Zone <laughs> Yeah. What do you think was the better of these? I This is my preference. Yeah, this, this is, the is definitely one. better. I'm enjoying this arcade setup while playing the games incorrectly. Okay, Ultimate, Mortal Kombat 3. What was the, is that like a different Mortal Kombat than regular Mortal yeah, Kombat? Yeah, it, it like reintroduced characters they stripped from the first one. Oh, you're supposed to jam the buttons. Oh yeah. Did we get any codes? Spend the first few minutes to see if we can get one attack off the ground. Oh, okay, so that's run. He says toasty, but it always sounded to me like Humpty, Humpty. They certainly are rattling these controls. I've been trying to do that move the whole time. I got it. It's backpack low kick. 
<laughs> oh, nice. Net. Nothing but. The guy told me I'm superb. <laughs> oh! This game made me think when I was a child that like uppercutting was a thing. It, yeah. It's like what you what you can do in a fight. Uppercut him, dude. <laughs> Don't take. <laughs> if he did that to me, I would just pull him back with my scorpion rope and I'd uppercut him. I don't know. Does it feel like you're at the dream machine? My experience with arcades was I never really went to them. I'd be walking around in, like the mall and like you see others playing. You know, you, my games? like my vision would lock in position, <laughs> you know, where the, where the dream machine was. And I kind of just stare at it while I walk by. Oh. But I never really was interested in the arcades. But birthday parties, you'd, you'd go to the arcade. Yeah, yeah. And the mom of whoever's birthday it was would buy tokens for everybody. Yes. But then it was super awkward to ask her to buy you more buy tokens. Buy more, yeah, 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 yeah. One quick round of Tetris. B type or A type, what, what's our game here? Uh, A? <laughs> Nine? Uh-oh. Nine? Let's do it. Give me your instant feedback thoughts on the controllers. My instant feedback is that I have to play it slower because I feel like the control stick is less precise. For a minute there, I was looking at the left side and saying, oh, Keith's doing pretty good. No. But no, and then I looked at the right <laughs> side and saw. Um, okay, I think that it's a fun way to play. This one is still my personal favorite yeah. one. This one was your favorite. I think this one is kind of one of the best of both worlds because you get the arcade yeah. layout uh, and you get a little bit of weight but it's not as bulky and ridiculous right, as these Right, ones. it feels a little bit normal. So what are we coming up, John? Well, we're gonna take a look at test equipment. They had to service those Super Nintendos. How did they do it? What kind of stuff did they use? We'll take a look at that next time on Jump Mesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh.